Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Zava Sound YouTube channel. My name is Don Lodum. Today I'm going to be talking about how to install the offline editor for the Digico S21 and S31. Um, a lot of questions have been asked um, about it via my support ticket manager uh, where you can go log on and ask me some questions. If you go to support.zavasound.com, I'll be glad to help you with really anything audio related. And um, yeah. Uh, you have to be a patron on patreon.zavasound.com to use that service, but it's only, depending on, you can go look at the different prices and the different tiers of support, and that is all, again, on patreon.zavasound.com. All right, um, so how do we go and uh, install the S31 software and S21 software on a Mac? Yes, you can do it on a Mac. Um, I know other... Some other editors for the SD series, SD12, SD7, SD9, all the SD series consoles do not have, uh, they do not give you the ability to use an offline editor uh, on a Mac. So if you go to Google Chrome or whatever browser you're using, just search Digico S31 offline editor, pops up there, enter. Digico offline software. You can also click it there. But if you get to this page, it says Mac users, please see below. See, it says many users worldwide regularly regularly use the offline system running on various Macs using a Windows emulation program. This doesn't really apply to us because we want the S31 software. So, where is it? Um right here s21 for mac s21 uh these are the different versions version 2.3 2.2 um you can actually get it get the s21 version it'll work just as good 2.3 is the latest version so click that and now it is downloading we just had a major power outage the other day uh, so my wi-fi is still acting a little bit slow power outage actually happened yesterday a tree fell down up the road from my house and clapped a whole bunch of cable lines and various other things, so this might take a second, but it shouldn't take that long. It'll show up in our downloads folder. And the reason I'm even doing this is I know I like to stick the Behringer consoles, but I am trying to see if I can get some sort of sponsorship from Digico because I really want to do an S31 tutorial series. Um, I know the S31 uh, is a relatively easy console to use. Um, it's actually, in some ways, it's easier than using the X32 because things are kind of streamlined. And we're going to take a look at the software today. This is kind of like a how to download and like a basic GUI, you know, graphic interface, like overview, like going through each thing, showing you how to get to the different pages and yada, yada, yada. All right, so it looks like we're almost done downloading, and there it is. So double-click the zip file. Ends up there. And then here it is, the DMG. Agree. It might tell you to go into your system preferences, and, you know, I don't think it'll happen this time. All you got to do is take this and drag it into the Applications folder. And it's in. Close that. Get rid of all that. X out of that and eject this. Now, if you go to Launchpad, um, here is the editor. So I'm going to put it down here. Let's click it. And it says cannot be open. So what? All you got to do is go to System Preferences. Privacy, open anyway, and I have it set that I don't need a password, I think, yep. And there comes the editor, awesome. It's actually something I was playing, it's funny that it retained this information. Um, it's actually something... Um, 
uh, I did a while ago. Anyway, here we are. You can hear my Mac fans kind of running loudly. So, getting reacquainted myself right now. So there are, I remember from the editor the last time I used it, there was no um, uh, fader volumes for the channels. What you'd have to do is select the channel, and then this would be your fader. This is kind of like a global assigned fader. Instead of having like one fader for each um, instrument uh, in the offline editor, it just, you use this. Uh, so you click, you select the channel. So like, let's say we wanted to turn kick in up. You select it by clicking it and bring it up. And then you can go to kick out, bring that one up. And then you can see it retains that volume. It also shows you down here. Um, you cannot double click that, unfortunately. That's annoying. So this appears to pan. Yes, it does pan. So you can select this pan knob. And then just reset it by clicking through it. All right, so that's pretty cool. Let's go to interface. Go through these. One, two, three. So one, two, three. Aha. So now we're on the... Okay, so this emulates the three screens on the S31. Let me pull up a picture of the S31. Oops. So you can see how it has three screens. And essentially, this is emulating those three screens. You use uh, the number keys one, two, oh, you got to click in it. One, two, three to navigate through it. So this looks like our EQ. So if we wanted to EQ the electric guitar, yeah, we can go through and change the EQs for them. That's pretty cool. All right, um, so yeah, that's how to install it. Um, we can um, alter between the console mode, S21 and S31, which is pretty neat and handy. Go to Snapshots. Um, I wish I could figure out how to go through the interface like as a whole. Okay, so once you're here, you click this. Yeah, now it's coming back to me. Then you got your matrix your session and snapshot, preferences, all that stuff, audio sync. So these are, you could put in two different DMI cards on the um, S31 and S21. So the S21 and S31, they have the same IO account, they have the same everything, except one has, I think it's eight less faders, or if I'm, maybe 10 less faders, or eight or 10 less faders, um, and uh, one less screen, but it has the same IO count. Um, they can all run at 96k, um, which is pretty neat, especially at a console at this price point. Actually, the console is a bit pricey. Uh, it's about 10,000 uh, bucks for a S31. I think it's 7,000 for an S21, um, maybe six or 7,000 for an S21. But I mean, they they really do have good compatibility with Waves, AVOM. Uh, this thing can work with basically any Digico rack, a D2, a D rack, a literally anything which is really cool and really handy to have um yep you can see 96k 48k and yeah it's it's pretty cool you have a lot of flexibility with this console um you can program macros which is really neat and that's something that a lot of consoles do not have at this price point um you have uh i know a few graphic eqs i don't know how many uh, i think it might be probably 10 Graphic EQs, 8 to 10 graphic EQs. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, it's a really neat console. I just kind of wanted to show you guys how to set it up in a basic overview of how to navigate. You can see, um, there's, they must still be working on <laughs> uh, fixing all the graphics and stuff. Um, okay, so it is, a, okay, I'm figuring this out. So it has 16 graphic EQs. You can see that when you're in the graphic EQ um, menu. Eight effect slots, it looks like, but remember you have um, the option to uh, you have the option to um, 
uh, what am I trying to say? You have the option to use the waves card. So you might have eight um, effects here. You could see what they are. Reverb, delay, enhancer, chorus, flanger, and apparently you can only have six of those, but um, there's a whole bunch of different reverbs, a few delays, um, I guess an enhancer of some type. Um, but yeah, we're going to be going over all this in a future video. This is kind of just a, um, a general overview of what the console is going to look like um, as far as like the me menus and how it all works. One thing that's worth noting is that if you're rec this is not, I don't understand why um, they did this, but there is not MIDI capability with um, uh, the snapshot menu, meaning you cannot fire a MIDI cue off the console via a snapshot, which is really, granted there's devices that, I mean, I you can even use one of these guys, so if like you're in a theater situation you can use a novation midi controller like this um to control um you know q lab or whatever but it's kind of unfortunate you can't just stick to one q list and hit go 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 and you know certain cues will fire midi cues uh, or certain cues will fire midi signals to go to q lab or whatever it just does not play well with midi um this console doesn't play with it at all which is kind of a sucky sucky thing Anyway, but it is pretty cool. The um, it is pretty advanced. The snapshot um, because you have fader crossfade, fader crossfades, which is very uncommon. Um, a few consoles I've seen that do it um, is this one, obviously the SD series consoles. Um, but yeah, there it's definitely a it's definitely a neat desk. I think it's a little more uncommon. Um, you can reorder cues. Yeah, this console is definitely more uncommon than other consoles. Um, uh, it's it's hard it's rare to find these things actually out in the field. A lot of people, you know, at this point when you're dropping 10k on a console, you'd probably just upgrade to an SD9 and SD11, some small format Digico SD series desk rather than getting an S series desk. But there's not a lot of videos covering um, much about the S series, so I figured I wanted to start making some videos about it. And um, anyway, that's what I have for you guys. Thanks for joining me today. Again, my name is Donald Odom. Always a pleasure. If you have any questions about installing um, the Digico S series editor, um, let me know. Go to patreon.zavasound.com to become a patron. And when you become a patron, it allows you the ability to go to our support website, support.zavasound.com, and get support from me and one-on-one, um, -on -one, and uh, I'll be glad to help you guys out. Anyway, on that note, thanks for joining me. Again, my name is Donald Odom, and I'll see you next time.